Welcome back to the new news hour. We have Mark Emery with us. The, I, you are not the self-professed Prince of Pot. That is a name that you say the media has actually given to you, uh, American media, CNN and whatnot. That's right. So the, uh, the media-dubbed Prince of Pot is here, and this has been uh, certainly making news headlines across Canada and the States. The last couple of weeks have been uh, certainly uh, exciting, interesting, not dull for you. Uh, released from jail just yesterday, in fact, on $50,000 bail. Uh, arrested in Halifax last week at the request of the U.S. authorities and uh, alleged charges including conspiring to manufacture marijuana, distribute marijuana and launder money, and now uh, an extradition hearing into the States in uh, a couple of weeks' time, and, and some pretty serious stuff. I mean, a minimum charge there of, of 10 years behind bars. Mark, well, let's, not let's talk ourselves. about they, this. They want me to be in prison for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and that's not disturbing so much uh, because ultimately you know when I arrived in Vancouver 11 years ago penniless with a determination to put together a revolutionary marijuana legalization movement and uh, I would I sold books and magazines door-to-door -door on the very streets of Vancouver for four months uh, making a dollar or two per book and magazine they were banned in those days before we in fact with the brilliant uh, legal work of Alan Young we we overturned that ban in Canada was free to read about marijuana and look at things about marijuana and so all along in my life, all the money I've ever earned, as I've told people, I own no stocks, bonds, money, homes, property. I have never owned possessions. Where's the money? Where does it go? I give it away, and I'll, I'll be producing a list in the, in the days ahead of the millions and millions of dollars I have given to every major organization worldwide, and uh, hundreds of people who themselves were in jail and needed lawyers, bail money. Millions of dollars. You've millions just of dollars. given away. Absolutely. You say political parties also. Do oh, you mean absolutely. your own, the, the marijuana party, or do I you gave, mean other parties? I gave extensive amounts of money to the BC Marijuana Party, Manitoba Marijuana, Saskatchewan Marijuana Party, uh, marijuana parties throughout the world. Even the, in Israel, the Green Leaf Party, we gave them $2,000 a couple of years ago. We've given money to Dennis Kucinic for president campaign. The NDP uh, received thousands of dollars in the last election. I've spent endless amounts of money uh, putting... Uh, democratic change for human rights in the forefront and every cent I've ever earned has gone to that I even spent a quarter million dollars of my own money from 2002 to 2004 on a fabulous drug addiction program that I personally uh, administered here in the city called the iboga therapy house where we treated hardcore heroin crack cocaine and methamphetamine users to great success let's okay let's move away from the money aspect just for a second here were you totally blindsided in Halifax when RCMP again acting on the US authorities request arrested you last week did that come out of nowhere for you? No, all my life I've been fated for this unique destiny. I felt very, very uh, motivated to this end since I was very, very young. I've always been very gifted with money at a very early age, like age seven. I had my first business and age 11 I had my first successful business that went on to produce revenue. and. I've been being trained my whole life to earn money, to give that money away, and to have a, a, the ultimate confrontation with the oppressive authorities. The United States government is an evil government. They have a gulag of hundreds of thousands of people in jail for 5, 10, 15, 20 years of life but for nonviolent drug offenses. They take exception to you selling marijuana seeds to American citizens online. Yes, They've come the, after you for but that. They're now. wrong. It's marijuana, the Supreme Court of Canada, which I also paid for that case, by the way, $85,000 of my money went to that, and everything you can ever think of I, I had a hand in paying for in the last 10 years that's why the movement the revolutionary movement to end prohibition has been so successful is because it's had a funder like myself and it, others like George Soros but I, I, my point I wanted to make was that it's all about what I have been able to do to change the way the public thinks of things and remember it's relatively rare but still very Canadian for people to, uh, to use just democratic uh, ideals for change. Most people today are using bombs or wars or invasions or terrorism to try and accomplish things because democracy has frustrated the poor and working classes of More the world. More than democracy though, I think your issue is putting the idea of Canadian sovereignty into the spotlight. People are saying why should the Americans be allowed to come up here and, and go after someone like Emery in terms of extradition. Others, oh. mind you, are saying oh. l l let the Americans do what the Canadians have not done for so long and, and well, first send of all, them off. No one ever complained in Canada about my work in 70. See if anyone had complained You're about saying me. in fact the government knew what you were doing, everyone they were knew. happy to Everyone take your taxpayer knew from dollars. The city, the mayor of Vancouver, to the city council of Vancouver, to the licensing bureau of Vancouver, to the provincial and federal government that received so much money from me, knowing that that money was directly from marijuana. See, no one in the public even complained to the police, or they would have raided me before. The reason the police let the Americans do all this is because they realized they could get rid of a problem all at once. Remember, the well, police. by letting the Americans come yes, in and do the dirty and, work? Yes, that's right, because remember, the police are the biggest lobbyists in favor of prohibition. Whenever you find someone who wants to keep marijuana,
marijuana illegal, it's always either Randy White or a police representative. So now by eliminating me in one fell swoop, the Americans, the Canadian police establishment, the prohibitionist forces have wiped out the worldwide leader, let's face it, I'm the recognized worldwide leader of this movement that profoundly affects 150 million. And that's why million, you say you've been and, oh, yeah, targeted, because, because you're high profile. There's hundreds of other seed sellers who have been selling seeds for but years and years, and they in... keep every penny of it for themselves and live wonderful, you know, ostentatious lives. I have given away every dime I ever earned, and this has been going on for 25 years. But people in my hometown, London, Ontario, will tell you that I was going to jail and fighting causes every day of my life there before I even came to British Columbia. Quickly, Mark, what's next now? Obviously, you're you know this extradition hearing in a couple of weeks you have to be a little bit concerned scared what what are you no. feeling you say you'll I've go been... to jail for this you'll be a marijuana martyr yeah yeah that would, could perhaps be the greatest honor I could ever have asked for now I don't want to that I want people to get together and galvanize this movement around the world and rally behind me not so much to save me but to be aware that there are hundreds of thousands you know there's a quarter million people in jail at any one time around the world for marijuana a beautiful God-given plant that God bequeathed to his children here on earth that doesn't hurt anybody. The Canadian Supreme Court, as I was going to mention before, said that marijuana is of no inherent harm, but they still maintain the government's right to regulate and control it. So I'm, I'm talking about an oppressed class of people, of millions of people, that were, say, were being saved and being represented by the use of my money, and I was being an instrument and a tool for this great revolution, and I felt that this is my unique destiny, and okay. this, is, this is what I have to accept. Mark, it's, uh, it's always interesting to have you here, always a little bit controversial. 